So what is area navigation? It is a system. Uh, it is a method of navigation which permits aircraft operations on any desired track within the coverage of station referenced navigation signal. So earlier, like we had no GPS, right? Earlier, like long back, traditionally, we didn't have GPS. Yeah. So how did aircraft uh, navigate? How did they fly from one point to another? So, using maps. Yeah, they can fly using maps, yeah. But uh, traditionally, it was not possible to fly directly from one point to another. Okay. So uh, if there were no maps, if the pilots were not uh, you know, able to navigate with the maps, then in those situations, they could not fly from one point to another directly. Like let's say from this point, from A to let's say this point, B. Okay. So there was no GPS which would give direct routing. Right. So traditionally, aircrafts had to fly from uh, one uh, ground station to next another ground station, which is which could be a VOR. And from there, they had to fly to another VOR. And from there, they had to fly to another VOR. So they had to take a longer routing traditionally. They had to fly from one ground uh, aid navade to another ground navade to another navade. So mm -hmm. they were not able to take direct routing. So uh, because of this, can you tell me what are the problems? Well, uh, you were not aware of any other uh, aircrafts around you? Uh, no, that ATC would uh, be uh, okay. giving you information. But what are the other problems of taking longer routes? Fuel. Yeah, you are going to consume more fuel. Uh, you are going to, it's going to take more time, right, to uh, travel to destination. Yeah. So you're wasting time. It's going to uh, cost more fuel. So these are some of the problems. Uh, uh, okay, of, yeah. Uh, tr traditionally, yeah. So now we have a new type of navigation, new method of navigation, which is called okay. as R nav navigation, which allows aircraft to fly a desired track, okay, a, uh, like the shortest track, but uh, within the coverage of station referenced navigation signal. So this direct track, track right, the pink route. It yeah. has to be within the coverage of a navid, like within the coverage of this navid. It has to be within the coverage of this navid. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or it has to be within the limits of self-contained navigation system. So self-contained navigation system examples are INS, IRS. So okay. this we will learn in instrument navigation. INS stands for Inertial Navigation System. IRS stands for Inertial Reference System. So these systems are actually, they will help to determine the position of aircraft hmm. uh, without relying on any external source, such as GPS or any VOR, nothing. Like the aircraft is able to determine its own position continuously as it is flying without relying on any GPS or any external signals or any external navigate, nothing. Okay. So all the modern aircrafts uh, use this, uh, this INS IRS system. Okay. So we will learn more in detail about uh, these systems in instrument navigation. Yeah. Okay. So once again, it is the method of navigation which permits aircraft operations on any desired track within the coverage of station reference navigation signal or within the limits of self-contained navigation system or combination of these. So there is no requirement to fly directly over ground-based facilities. You don't have to fly from one navigate to another navigate to another navigate. No, you can just fly directly from one point to another.
So uh, let's say you're flying from this point, point mm -hmm. A to point B. Why can't you just tune in directly into point B? V over and then fly directly. Because it's not in range of point yeah. A and it's when you're starting from point A. Yeah, exactly. So you will have to choose another VOR which is within the range. Within the range. Okay. Yeah. And then the next VOR which is within the range. Fly like that. So right. that's how aircrafts used to fly traditionally. Mm -hmm. Now, okay. a certain standard of accuracy must be met when RNAV is used. Okay. So when the RNAV is used, a certain standard of accuracy must be met. Okay. Yeah. There is a certain accuracy that must be met and that is called as required navigation performance or RNP. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when an RNAV is used, a certain standard of accuracy must be met. That is called as RNP, required navigation performance. So, uh, okay. Here we can see two waypoints, right? Waypoint one, waypoint two. And you can yeah. see those white lines, right? Yeah. And then you can see the black line in the middle. So that is the, let's say that is the track, the black line. Okay. So you have to be within an act, a certain accuracy. Okay. And that uh, standard of accuracy must be met. Let's say RNP one. Okay, yeah. it means that your aircraft should be able to fly within an accuracy of plus or minus one nautical mile. That is, uh, it shouldn't deviate one nautic more than one nautical mile, mile to the right or more than one nautical mile to the left. Mm -hmm. Okay, basically, it has to be within this area, one nautical mile radius. The position of the aircraft must be within this one nautical mile radius. Okay. So that is the meaning of RNP1. So what if I say RNP2? It means that it has to be within one nautical, a uh, two nautical mile radius. Okay. That is the meaning of RNP2. Okay. okay. Yeah. So a certain standard of accuracy must be met when RNAV is used and that is called as required navigation performance. Hmm. Now, what are the inputs that are required? <laughs> so, these are the inputs on the left side, you can see. Uh, in order to uh, navigate, in order to do RNAV navigation, you need to have these inputs, okay? Some of these inputs or all of these inputs. Okay. So, uh, first one is VOR DME. Okay, we need a VOR DME to, uh, have, uh, to do RNAV navigation. We need... A GPS, okay. It's not necessary to have all of these inputs, okay. Some of That's these inputs, them. yeah, will also be enough. So we can have a GPS. It, uh, another input is ILS. Another one is INS, IRS. Mm. Then ADC, Air Data Computer. Yeah. This people study in instrument navigation. So it will give us the uh, altitude information, speed information, temperature and all that, air data okay. computer. And then time. Okay. So yes. using these inputs, uh, the required accuracy can be achieved. Okay. Yeah. So all these input information okay, uh, is processed within the system, okay, the system is in the aircraft, the RNAV system is inside the aircraft. So all these input information is processed within the system to give the most accurate and continuously updated position. So let's say your aircraft is over here, okay, or over here. So your aircraft position is continuously updated, okay, with the use of all these inputs, okay. with yeah. uh, with good accuracy, with the required accuracy, and also you will get other information such as uh, which is displayed to you, such as the course, the estimated time of arrival, meaning what time will you reach this point, okay, point B. So all this information will also be given to you using these inputs. 
Okay. Yeah. Is, is there any doubt? No, no, no. Okay. Okay. So, what are the advantages of RNAV? Uh, reduction in distance, right? You're flying shorter route. Yeah. Flying time is reduced. You can save on fuel, right? <clears throat> By giving airlines and pilots greater flexibility and choice of routes. An increased uh, route capacity. You're making more efficient uh, use of the airspace. Mm. By making full use of available airspace, by providing more direct routes, parallel, dual routes, and all that, and mm. then you can reduce the separation separation between aircraft. You can reduce the vertical separation and the horizontal separation yeah. with the help of RNAV. So these are the benefits of RNAV. Okay, so there are two type of RNAV. This is very very this is very important. There are two types of RNAV and three levels of RNAV. So first, let us look at the two type of RNAVs. First one is the basic RNAV. Okay. And they can ask you, what is the position accuracy of basic RNAV? Mm -hmm. It is five nautical miles. So basic RNAV means your position has to be accurate within five nautical miles radius. Yeah. Within 5 nautical mile radius, your position has to be uh, accurate. So what type of RNAV is it? This is called as basic, basic RNAV. RNAV. Then the second type of RNAV is called as precision RNAV. Precision RNAV, the accuracy has to be within 1 nautical mile radius. Mm. Okay. So all you have to remember is basic RNAV is 5 nautical miles. Precision precision RNAV RNAV. And one nautical mile. Yeah. yeah. And this accuracy has to be met 95% of the flying time. 95% mm -hmm. okay. of the time it has to be met. Uh, this accuracy must be met. So the two types are basic RNAV and precision RNAV. Okay. And there are three levels of RNAV. Two types we saw. Now there are three levels of RNAV. Uh, one is a 2D RNAV, 3D, and 4D. Okay. Mm -hmm. So 2D RNAV means um, 2D RNAV provides guidance only in the horizontal plane. Okay. 2D RNAV provides guidance only in the horizontal plane. Horizontal. Mm -hmm. 3D provides guidance in horizontal and vertical. Okay. Yeah. 3D uh, RNAV provides guidance in horizontal and vertical. 4D RNAV uh, will also, which uh, also has a timing function. So 4D uh -huh. RNAV, we will do it on a different day because for that we need to learn what is INS, what is IRS. And so, so 2D is only horizontal plane. 3D is, uh, you will get guidance both in horizontal and vertical. 